Soils are one of the most important assets in your farm and being able to manage a soil well is a really important skill for you as a farm manager. A useful tool in managing your soil asset is being able to use a soil test. Soil tests can tell you a lot about your soil. They can help you look at your soil health, identify soil constraints and help you with nutrient management. You can be a lot more effective with your decisions. But to be able to use a soil test, you need to take a soil sample well in the paddock. And in this video, we're going to show you the steps to follow to take a soil sample out in the field so that when you get your lab results back, they're as accurate as they can be. Now you've got to work out where to take your soil sample from. Soils are really variable across the landscape. They change from place to place. So to get an accurate result, you've got to try and take your soil sample from within the same area. The three things you've got to consider is to don't mix up your soil types, um, take them from the same area um, of management. So if you've got cropping and grazing, you keep it within the grazing area. And don't mix up areas from different parts of the landscape. So for example, here in this rolling country, we've got hilltops, the mid slopes, and then your gullies. And you wouldn't want to take a sample from across the different parts of that landscape. Keep it within the mid slope or the gullies, but don't mix them up. Now that you know where you're going to take your sample from, you've got to get your equipment ready to go before you go out in the paddock. That way you can get the jo job done properly and on time. The first thing you're going to need is some kind of soil corer to take your core sample out of the ground. There's lots of different types and we'll have a look at them later, but you need something to pull your soil sample from your topsoil. You may need a spade as well. And it's a good idea to have a bit of steel so that you can push soil out from inside the core if need be and just to tidy up things between samples. You're going to need a bucket to put your soil sample in before sending it to the lab. And of course, when you've got your sample, you're going to have to put it in a bag and send it off. And you need a marking pen to fill in your bag before filling it. You're going to need the lab's postage pack to send off to the lab. If you're using different labs, have different postage packs. and a little GPS or mobile phone is really handy so you can make a note of where you've taken the soil sample from. Um, some labs will give you a chain of custody form to fill out as well to make sure this goes with the sample off to the lab so they know where the sample's from and they don't mix it up. And finally, it's a good idea to have some water and paper towel just to tidy yourself up with as you're doing the job in the paddock. If you're really smart and you're on the internet, then there's no harm in filling everything out on the tablet. Saves you the paperwork and it goes straight to your home phone, home office in the cloud. Now you've got your equipment sorted out, the next thing is to decide which method you're going to use for taking your sample. To work out your sample method, there's two key things to remember. The depth of sample, how deep you're going to take your soil sample with your corer, and the second is the pattern you're going to use when taking the sample across your, your sampling area. So looking at soil sample depth with your soil corer, they usually have a particular depth on them and you've got to decide how deep your soil sample has to be taken. Most soil samples in agriculture are taken 0 to 10, but if you have other management goals or your topsoil is deeper, you may want to take a deeper sample. The second thing you've got to decide on is your sampling pattern. So with a paddock like this, there's two choices you have. The first one is you can do a transect where we sample across a line across our soil management area. That line can either be a straight line or a zigzag line, but either way, you're taking a sa sample every couple of metres across the line. The second pattern you can use is called a cluster sample, and that's where you just pick a spot in your sampling area and you take your samples from around that spot. That's known as a cluster sample. Finally, you've got to make sure that there's no hot spots mixed into your sample. A hot spot is an area of the paddock that's a little bit different than the rest. So that's areas like sheep camps, fallen trees, gate, gateways and laneways and watering points. You don't want to be taking samples for any, from any of those places or where there's fertiliser being dumped because that's going to skew the results as well. Now you've got your equipment ready and you've worked out your sampling method, now you've got to take and handle the sample. The first thing is when to take your sample. The best time is the same time each year when you've got reasonable soil moisture around. Don't forget to take them apart at least three months away from when you've done fertilisers and soil amendments because if you do them too close to having put out stuff onto your paddock, you're going to throw your results out. 
The second part to it is taking enough soil samples out in the paddock so that we get an accurate result for the lab. So as I walk across taking my samples, it's a good idea to take at least 25 cores and mixing them in the bucket. So at least 25 means I've got a reasonably accurate sample from the paddock. When we've got 25 samples in the bucket, we mix that up and that's what we call a composite sample. And that's what we take our soil sample from to send to the lab. Once you've taken your composite sample in your bucket, from there you take your sample and put it in your plastic bag. And that's what we need to send to the lab. So you need to clearly label the bag, put your name, the date, the soil sample depth, your enterprise and the paddock ID clearly on the plastic bag before putting your soil sample into it. Seal that up and then there's usually paperwork that the lab supplies you, a chain of custody form or a consignment note. You have to complete those clearly, write clearly and easily so everyone can read it and that's what goes in the post pack or the courier bag and that you then send off to the lab. Mm -hmm.